all right guys so now we're going to be making this render right here uh so the way the way we made this was basically by creating a landscape which was um basically sculpted in such a way that it was um high from this side and from this side as well and it's low from this uh, from uh, from the middle and in the center we have this grass with a few clouds uh, i think it looks pretty good the lighting is pretty nice it's pretty cinematic and we have some mountains in the back which we're going to add as well all right so let's begin uh with unreal engine 5 so i'm just going to open Unreal Engine 5 and I'm just going to be opening any project uh, you can create a new one if you want however I'm just going to use an existing one because I have all my asset packs and material packs imported in that um, so yeah I'm just going to do that now we are going to be using assets from Megascans um, and yeah basically the mountains uh, the trees and everything they're going to be from Megascans so yeah just be sure to use that and apart from that we are also going to be using uh, the, the tree we're going to be using is not basically not inside this Megascans library you have to download a separate pack from Unreal Engine uh, Unreal Engine's basically what do you call it uh, the Epic Game Store uh, so I'm just going to go to my start menu and just open the Epic, Epic Games launcher and what you can do here is that just wait for it to open so once it's opened you can just simply go to marketplace and here I'm just going to search for Megascans trees um yeah so basically these trees are from mega scans however they're not inside that quixel bridge um thing which we usually use for assets so i'm just going to search for mega scans and actually there seem to be quite a lot of these so i'm just going to be searching for mega scans three and you basically have two collections uh one is this european hornbeam if that's what it's called um you have these sort of trees uh however the one which i'm going to be using is going to be this one black alder um european black alder yeah so it's just personal preference whichever you like better you can just download that and now this is going to be a pretty large download if i just show you the file size of this um where is it yeah it's 8.7 gigabytes so it, yeah it is going to take some time to download but once it is you can simply add it to project just press this add to project and just select whichever project which you want to add it to um and so i already do have it added if i just go ahead and look at this black alder folder um yeah so i'm just going to do that and now to begin with the scene what i'm going to do is i'm going to be creating a brand new level so i'm just going to go to file new level and i can just simply open an empty level you can start with an open world level but i just like to start from scratch because I like to do all the lighting and stuff myself uh so just press ctrl s to save the level and i'm just going to be calling it um free underscore dark ss that should be fine now let's go to window env light mixer and now we can just simply start with the lighting so i'm just going to be creating a skylight atmospheric light sky atmosphere volumetric cloud and height fog basically all of our lighting is done most of it um so yeah that's the beauty of beauty of unreal engine 5. so now let's begin with adding a landscape so for the landscape what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go to uh, the selection mode thing right here and i'm just going to go down to landscape and now you're going to see that we have a landscape ready so i'm just going to be creating it for now um everything else i'm going to set it to default for now because i think it is fine i'm just going to be placing the camera somewhere like there and now we can start to sculpt that um that bump so if i just go ahead and close this yeah you're going to see the, basically this part is flat however these edges these sides are, have been um, sort of extruded if you will so i'm just going to be sculpting them out press ctrl z and i'm just going to be reducing the size of this brush something like that and then just oops my bad the strength is way too high so just reduce the strength and just do it slightly something like that now we don't need to do it uh, we don't need to extrude anything behind that because obviously it's not going to be visible so I think something like that should be fine. Uh, however, actually, you know what? Before that, before we start doing this, let me first go ahead and set up a camera because obviously we're going to be looking at the scene from the perspective of a camera. So it is good to have that perspective in mind so that we can sculpt accordingly. I'm just going to go to add cinematic and cine camera actor. Right click the cine camera actor and pilot it so that we can control it basically. And so I think let me just place it something like that. Right now, the problem with this is that it's way too... Um, the the, the the depth of field is way too shallow and the what do you call it the focal length is way too high so if i just go down to current focal length you're going to see it's 35 millimeters however the look which i'm going for uh which is which you can see in this scene is something like maybe 20 millimeters something like that it's pretty wide so i think something like that should be good i'm just going to go up again to the sensor width and sensor height and i'm just going to i'm just going to be setting them both to the same value so that we have a square image have a square um what do you call it frame 
right? So depth of field, I'm just going to turn it off for now. Just go to focus method, just disable this. We might add some later on, but yeah, I just like to turn it off in the start. And then later on, we can decide if we want it or not. So I think we are good. Now let me just go back to my landscape mode. And now we can start sculpting. So I'm just going to go down a little, a little bit, something like that. And let's, oops, let's, let's scale it up. Actually, you know what? Let me just um, do it again. I think something like that should be fine. Let me just reduce the size of the brush and let's extrude. Let's bring that up. So now, you, now you're going to be noticing is that what you're going to be noticing is that this is not super smooth. It is a little jagged. However, that doesn't really matter that much because obviously we are going to be adding foliage on top of this. However, if you do want to smooth it, you can simply go to the smooth, um, what do you call it, brush, and then you can just smooth it out. However, actually, you know what? What I'm going to do is that I'm going to be undoing this. Let's increase the scale of these, um, these sort of mountains so that they have more of these boxes and therefore they, they're going to have more geometry. So I'm just going to be going to the back, going back to the sculpt mode. I'm going to be increasing the brush size, something like that. And now let's extrude this. So something like that should be fine from, from here. And from here, I'm just going to be doing, let me just decrease it a little bit and, and something like that should be good. Obviously this requires a lot of trial and error, and I would recommend you to spend some time with this. And obviously right now I'm just trying to show you how to do it. I'm not exactly focusing on the creative aspect. So I think something like that should be fine for now. Um, maybe bring the camera a little lower. Yeah, I think that looks like a pretty good mountain, right? So obviously it is a little different than this. However, I just wanted, I just wanted to try something different and yeah. Um, so now to make sure that we don't accident, accidentally move our camera, I'm just going to be right clicking it and I'm just going to be uh, going to the transform and I'm going to be checking this lock actor movement. So now if even if I try to move the camera, you're, you're going to see that we can't. Um, however, if you want to get out of the camera, then you can just stop piloting it and we can roam around our scene just like normal. So that's perfect. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be importing grass. So for the grass, I'm simply going to go to add, add quick sell content. And now we can just simply go ahead and let me wait for it to open first. And then we're going to be importing the grass. All right. So quick sell bridge has been opened. Yeah, so what you can do is you can simply just go uh, click this home icon right here. You can just go to 3D, 3D plants and then just go to grass. So the one which I like to use usually is um, now all this comes down to person preference to be honest, but the one which I used is uh, if I just go here to this computer icon, you're going to see everything which I have already downloaded. I think it was this one, the one which I used. So I'm just going to be using this one. Let's go ahead and add it. And once you have your grass added in your scene, you're going to see that all the meshes are going to appear like that. And now what you're going to do is you, is you simply want to go to uh, foliage mode. And here you're going to see all those grass assets, which you just imported. If, for example, if you don't see them, if I just go ahead and delete them, for example, if they show, don't show up and it looks like this, then you can simply just select the first grass asset. Then you can go down to the last grass asset and press shift and click that last one. And then you can simply go ahead and drag this into this foliage type. Now you're going to see we have all those assets right here. Perfect. So just press control A and just select one of them, press control A and make sure that all of them are checked. If you just uh, uncheck, you're going to see that all of them are checked now. Now, if I just go ahead and if I just go to my paint brush and if I paint it, you're going to see that we have a lot of grass and that's exactly what we want. So I'm just going to be scaling it down, something like that. You're going to see that right now we have two problems. The first one is that the size of these cross, this cross is way too large, right? And the second problem we have is, of course, that um, the, the density of the cross is way too high as well. So I'm just going to be uh, reducing the density first. So this density per, um, I don't know what this means, KUU, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to be setting it to something like 10. Let's try that. Actually, you know what? Let me just set it to 50. And then let's reduce the size of this. So the scale X, basically this has uniform scaling, which means that if we reduce the scale X, it's going to reduce scale Y and scale Z as well uniformly. So that's perfectly fine. I'm going to set it to 0 0.1 and the max to 0 0.3 because we do obviously want some variation. Okay, so 0 0.3 is a little, uh, 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 is a little too small. So how about we do 0 0.5 and 0 0.7? I think that should be better. How about 0 0.3 and 0 
five. Yeah, I think that should be the sweet spot. But right now, the problem which we have is that the density is a little too low again. So I'm just going to be, uh, by the way, just save your project because Unreal Engine might crash. Of course, we are adding a lot of foliage. So just be sure to keep saving it. All right. So I think now the density is fine at 100. Um, of course, we are seeing a lot of noise here. And let me just tell you the reason for that. Right now, the problem is that if I just go and uh, go into this, the, if I just press these three lines right here, you're going to see that the screen percentage is set to 65%. If I set it to 100%, you can see that now it looks a lot sharper and looks a lot better. However, of course, it is a lot choppier and the frame rate just dropped by a lot. So I'm just going to be setting it back to 65 for now. Um, so yeah, basically, this foliage is pretty um, high quality and it's a lot, uh, it's very demanding, right? So again, we also have our scalability set to cinematic. So if you want to just set it to epic, now you're going to see that the grass is going to look pretty unrealistic sort of. Um, Actually, you know what? I actually prefer this one. And of course, you're going to get a lot of frame rate as well. So if I just go back to cinematic, of course, cinematic looks more realistic. However, in this specific scene, I actually prefer the look of this one. If I just go to engine scalability settings and set it to cinematic, you're going to see that. Actually, this looks pretty, pretty nice. However, let me just go to my skylight. And let's turn on real-time capture because that's just going to add some uh, more... Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to light up the shadows a little more. So that's going to be good. And let me go back. And let's see if, let's see if there's a lot of, uh, there's that big of a difference between epic and cinematic. Because I don't think there is. This looks pretty decent. Now let's go to cinematic. Because of course there is quite a, quite a big um cost for your, yeah, I'm just going to go back to epic because epic looks pretty good. All right, perfect. So now let's simply go ahead and add some more foliage. And then we are going to be uh, adding that tree. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm simply going to go to my camera. I'm going to be opening my camera in the second viewport. If you don't have the second viewport, by the way, if I just go ahead and close this, you're going to simply go to window viewports and just turn this viewport to on. You can have up to four viewports if you want, uh, but two just two is the right number for me. So I'm just going to go, I'm just going to click this perspective button right here. And then we can just simply select this camera so that we're looking at the world from this camera and this is currently unlit so i'm going to be i'm just going to be using lit mode all right um and in this we can simply go to unlit because obviously if you have two lit viewports then it's gonna be uh, it's gonna have a huge cost on our um performance right so i think it looks pretty pretty decent one problem which i am noticing right now is that if, if you just look at this if i just go to lit mode you're going to see that right now the foliage is visible. If I go away, you're going to see that the foliage becomes pretty weird. And at one point, the foliage disappears, but the shadows are still there. So to get rid of that problem, basically what you, what you need to do is you can simply uh, go ahead and type a console command. You can simply type foliage dot force LOD, right? Foliage dot force LOD space zero. Now what this is going to do is that this is going to force the LOD zero, which is going to be the highest quality mesh of these, um, these, the, of these grass. To be used all the time so now you're going to see that the grass is still visible even if i go very far away um so yeah you you can use that however it does come with a huge performance cost so i would recommend you to not turn this on um until you are about to render so i'm just going to be turning it off now for celery and if you wanted to set if you want to set it to the default you can simply set it to minus one and it's going to set back to default if i just go ahead away you're going to see that it's fine all right so now you can simply go ahead and start painting uh, the foliage. So what I'm going to do firstly is that I'm going to be go ahead, going ahead into foliage mode. Let me just go to erase mode and let's erase everything. If by the way, it's not erasing, make sure that your erase density is set to zero. If it's set to one, then it's not going to be erasing anything. It's going to erase very little. And if it's set to zero, it's going to erase basically everything which you hover it over. So that is perfect. Now I can just simply go ahead, uh, go back to paint mode and let's try painting some foliage. So one thing which I'm noticing right now is the size is a little too large of the foliage so i'm just going to be selecting all of them let me just set back set it back to 0 0.2 and the maximum to 0 0.4 maybe let's try this out i think that is a lot more decent that's a lot better let me just go to unlit more for this by the way all right so now what i'm going to do is uh the reason why i have two viewports here is because I only want to paint my foliage into the areas where which the camera is going to be looking. Of course, if you paint the foliage, for example, right here, it is going to take up resources in our computer. However, it's not going to be visible on our scene. So that's not something which we want to do. So I'm just going to be painting it only in areas which are visible in the camera. 
something like that and you, i can even use this viewport to paint as well right so one problem which i'm noticing right now is the density is way too less so i'm just going to be going ahead and increasing the density to something like 300 of course if you have a slow computer then you would not want to increase it this high i would recommend you to set it to something a little lower something like that looks decent um however one thing which i am noticing right now is that we basically don't have any um if i just go to light mode in this you're going to see that we don't have any landscape material right so for example if for example um there are some areas where there is no foliage and there this weird material is this this material is showing right so what i'm going to do to fix that is that i'm going to be simply downloading a grass material and i'm going to be applying that to the landscape so i'm just going to go to add quixel content and let's just get this grass material it's pretty good and low quality works or just fine you don't really need to go that high and if i just select my landscape and go down to landscape material and if i just drag this in you're going to see that it looks pretty realistic and now those so, uh, some of those areas where previously it was that white awkward material now they don't have that so one thing which i am noticing right now is that this these weird lines in the middle uh these tall grass in the middle they're they don't really look look they don't really look good so i'm just going to be erasing those um if i just go ahead and reduce my brush size like that and if i oops my bad let me just go to this view this viewport and let's see here we have that i think there's somewhere here so i'm just going to be reducing those yeah and that just works fine all right so now i think our scene is looking pretty decent the only thing which i want to do is i want to modify the landscape a little bit let me go to unlit mode and maybe increase this a little bit more to sort of have that edge be more steep obviously all this comes down to your personal preference if you think this looks bad and if you think if you have another idea of your own i would actually recommend you to use that and in fact i would recommend you to come up with your own ideas yeah because that's really going to test your own creativity and it's going to force you to come up with your own ideas right so i think it looks pretty decent however one thing which i'm going to be doing is that i'm going to be switching to path tracing mode because usually path tracing looks a lot better for uh for grass and i'm just gonna let me just switch to path tracing you're gonna see that this looks absolutely different doesn't it um and so yeah i'm just gonna be using path tracing however if you are if you are using uh if you're trying to create basically um a real-time scene then obviously path tracing is not an option for you so you can just go with that as well right so let's start with the lighting so if i just go to this scene you're gonna see actually before lighting let me just add this tree first and then we're gonna be working on the lighting